Okay, you can start now. Uh, good morning, everyone. Today I will uh, present a a, <clears throat> a brief introduction to to the Leo satellite constellations. In this presentation, I will start by understanding the satellite constellation network, then introduce the satellite orbital elements then explore the inter-satellite links and show various formulations, and lastly conclude with key ideas. Uh, firstly is the background. Satellites serve as the backbone of modern technology, enabling many applications. So what can satellites do? For the Earth observation satellites, they can monitor weather, disaster, and aggregator and so many um, things. And for the navigation satellite, they can determine the ground position uh, of the cars, the uh, airplanes or uh, any objects in the earth. And for the communication satellites, they can provide communication service with a global coverage. Uh, and the communication satellites are essential supplement for the terrestrial networks, uh, they are very high stable, not influenced by the natural disaster. Uh, here I have a summary of the uh, most common missions of the satellites. So as you can see, uh, the, the satellites can uh, work for the communications, the Earth observation, technology development, navigation, and space science. And from the number of satellites, as you can see, uh, the number of the communication satellites is the highest one. So uh, it is very important. Uh, as satellites are very important, they have attracted much attention from both academic and industry. Here I list three um, commercial satellite constellations in the United States. They are uh, the 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 satellite constellation operated by Starlink, Amazon, and OneWeb. Uh, and here is a cool thing. On January 2nd, 2024, SpaceX has launched its first batch of Starlink direct to sale satellites. It marks a significant leap forward in mobile communication technology. As Elon Musk says, this technology will allow for mobile phone connectivity anywhere on Earth, although each satellite beam supports around 7 million bits per beam, and the beams themselves are quite broad. This ne network isn't competing with ground-based cellular networks. Instead, it provides a solution in regions lack of cellular infrastructure. Uh, and this direct to sale service is uh, like is very similar to a cellular tower in space, with each satellite uh, equipped with an advanced E node B modem. This means that uh, unmodified cell phones, the ones we carry every day, can now connect directly to the satellite overhead, and we don't need the terrestrial cell towers. Uh, and here, uh, ne next we'll talk about the satellite constellation network. So first of all, uh, what are the satellite constellations? The satellite constellations are groups of artificial sat satellites working together as a single system. Uh, the satellite constellation can provide the nearly uh, continuous global coverage. Uh, and they are deployed with similar attitude, orbital eccentricity, and uh, inclination. Uh, and the satellite constellations can be classified into the medium Earth orbit or MEO and low Earth orbit or LEO satellite constellations. So uh, to to uh, <clears throat> sorry to achieve the aim to provide the nearly continuous global coverage, uh, but all of the 
MIO and LEO satellite constellation and GEO satellite can uh, achieve the same goal. But compared with the GEO satellite, the, um, the satellite constellation, especially the LEO satellite constellations have some advantages. So first of all, um, because the uh, satellite constellations are closer to the Earth, so it has a lower latency, and, and also it can have a broadband communications to have a better um, communication capacity. Uh, and certainly it has also a lower path losses and power requirement. So because of these advantages, the satellite constellations, especially the LEO satellite constellations uh, are very important these days. Uh, and here is a, an important notation to describe the satellite network. Uh, it, the, satellite, the, <clears throat> the satellite constellations can be described as I, P, Q, P, F. Uh, and here is the detailed explanation of these parameters. So first of all, I is the inclination with the respect to the equator. Uh, which ranges from zero to pi. Uh, and the Q is the number of satellites on each plane. And P is the number of planes. So, so the total number of the satellites on the, in the constellations is P times Q, and it is here. Uh, and F is a phasing factor to determine the relative spacing between uh, satellites in agent planes. Uh, and it can, we can derive the the, uh, the equation like this, uh, and I will talk about it later. Uh, and as you can see, the uh, I list two common tra common satellite constellation. Uh, one is Walker Star, and the other one is the Walker Delta. Uh, and here is their um their notation. Uh, so before introducing <clears throat> the facing, the facing, uh, the relative facing, we, uh, we can. I will introduce what is the uh, intraplane satellite and what is a uh, interplane satellite. So for the uh, intraplane satellites, it means adjust adjacent satellites within the same orbit plane, uh, and the interplane satellites, it means the satellites across orbital planes, uh, which means the satellites are on the different planes. So as you can see the picture on the right, uh, we can get the, oh, sorry. We can get the interplane facing uh, here, interplane facing. Uh, this is the, um, like the angle, the difference of the angle between two planes. So uh, it equals two pi divided by P. Uh, and this is the intraplane facing, uh, which is the angle difference uh, between the satellites on the same on the same orbit. Uh, so it equals two pi divided by q. Uh, and the <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and the most important one is the relative facing between satellites in adjacent planes. Uh, as you can see here, one one. Uh, which means the first satellite on the plane one uh, and P1, PQ, which means the first or the, the Q uh, satellite on the plane P. Uh, so here is the angle to uh, calculate the relative facing. Uh, it equals two pi, uh, two pi divided by PQ. And here F, F is the uh, parameter we just talked about uh, here facing factor. So F is a, a integer, uh, which is in the range uh, one minus P to P minus one. Uh, and then I talk about the, the satellite orbital elements. Uh, so there are six traditional orbital elements uh, they are the inclination I, eccentricity E, semi-major axis alpha, the right ascensions of ascending node or uh, REM, omega, 
and true anomaly V, an argument of the perigee uh, omega, little omega. Uh, and besides the six traditional orbital elements, here is one global constant for this constellation is H, which means the attitude. Uh, and this figure on the right, uh, it has listed uh, four of these six traditional elements. Uh, they are I inclination, uh, omega, and argument of the porridge, V, true anomaly, uh, and a big omega, the right ascension of ascending node. Uh, it will, it looks very complex, at least for me at the first time, so I will introduce them one by one in details. So for the first uh, element, I, uh, it means the or orbit inclination to the equator, uh, which ranges from zero to pi. Uh, and I have classified it into three types. So for the first one is the equatorial orbit. Um, the equatorial orbit with an inclination of zero degrees. Uh, it means the satellites in an equatorial orbit align perfectly with the Earth's equator. And the second is the polar orbit, um, marked by an inclination of 90 degrees or uh, pi divided by two radians. These orbits pass over the Earth's poles here, like as you can see. Um, and additionally, for the orbits with an inclination not uh, zero or 90 degrees, they are called inclined orbit. And for the orbits with an inclination, nation between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, the satellites move in a different, um, like it travels in the opposite direction of the Earth's rotation. Uh, and here I will talk about the second and the third element. Uh, so as you can see, the eccentricity uh, is a coefficient ranging from uh, zero to one. It determines the shape of the satellite's orbit. It tells us whether the orbit is more circular or stretched out with a value between zero and one. Uh, and eccentricity of zero means the orbit is a perfect circle, commonly seen in the Leo constellation. Uh, and as the value of eccentricity moves closer to one, the orbit becomes more stretched. Uh, and the third element is the semi-major axis, denoted by the letter uh, alpha. Uh, this is essentially the orbit's uh, radius when it's uh, uh, circular, uh, but it pre represents half of the length of the major axis in an uh, elliptical orbit. It can be thought of as the average distance from the satellite to the center of the Earth over one orbit. Uh, and here is, are the uh, formulations to calculate them uh, based on the R1 and R2. Uh, R1 is the distance between the parish to the center of the Earth. Uh, and R2 is the distance between the apology to the center of the Earth. Uh, and then I will talk about the uh, last three elements. Uh, so for, for the uh, omega, it means the argument of the uh, porridge. And here you can see the porridge means the closest um, uh, point. Uh, to to the center of the uh, Earth on the orbit. Um, and the second one, I think, is one of the most important elements in, in satellite constellation. It is called the right ascension of ascending node, or RAN. Uh, it is the latitude of the ascending node. Uh, as you can see here is the angle of omega. Um, it means it measures the angle from a fixed point in the space, which is a vernal equinox. So vernal equinox is the point uh, from the center of the earth to, to the sun at the first day of spring. Uh, and 
uh, from this po uh, fixed point to the uh, to the point where the satellite crosses the equatorial plane from south to north. This is known as an ascending node. So this angle is very important because it helps us to locate the orbit in space uh, and is subject to change over time due to the <clears throat> rotational movement of the Earth. Uh, and the second one uh, uh, is also very important. It's called the true anomaly uh, represented by the letter V. This is the angle from the parage, um, the closest point of the orbit to the Earth to the satellite's current position as it moves along its orbit path. So as you can see, with the um, element omega and the element V, we can locate the position of a satellite. So these two elements, uh, I think they are very important uh, among the six traditional elements. Um, but however, uh, if the orbit is circular, V is undefined so, because, so, because the parage doesn't exist. And we have instead another element called V. Uh, so uh, V is also called the argument of latitude or the phase angle, which is the angle between the ascending node and the satellite's current position. So it's like we instead uh, parage to the ascending node to um, to measure the the location of the satellite. Uh, and now we, I um I want to add another uh concept. So this this concept is like the ascending satellites and descending satellite. So as you can see, the ascending satellites um is plotted in the red one, and the descending satellite is uh satellites are plotted in the blue lines, or blue satellite. So for the ascending satellites. The, the satellites fly towards the latitude increasing direction. So when the orbit inclination is uh, between zero and 90 degrees, the, their flying direction is lost east. So like the red lines. Uh, and for the descending satellites, the satellites fly towards the latitude decreasing direction. So when the inclin orbit inclination i between zero and ninety degrees, their direction is southeast. And with this concept, we can relate the um ascending or descending satellites to the element we just talked about, the element u, which is the phase angle. We can use the uh, element U to classify ascending satellites and descending satellites. So for for the element U, where well, its um, value is between minus 90 degrees to 90 degrees, uh, the satellite is ascending satellite, and otherwise uh, it's a descending satellite. Uh, so besides the six traditional orbit elements, there is one important uh, element called attitude edge. Uh, so when the um, the orbit is red, is a circular, the orbit radius equals attitude edge plus the radius of the Earth, Re. Uh, and based on the attitude, we can classify the satellites into three parts. Uh, and we also have talked about them uh, in the previous slides. They are the low Earth orbit or LEO satellites, medium Earth orbit or MEO satellites, geostationary stash equatorial orbit or GEO satellite. Uh, and as you can see for the LEO satellites, uh, their attitude ranges from uh, approximately 500 to 1,200 kilometers, uh, and for the MEO satellites, their attitude range from 5,000 to 20,000 kilometers, and for the geosatellites, 
uh, it is located at approximately 33,000 kilometers, uh, which has uh, which synchronized with the Earth's rotation, maintaining a fixed position uh, relative to to the surface of on the Earth. Uh, and here is a picture to show the uh, period for these three types. Satellites for the LEO, uh, it takes about 120 minutes to round circle and six hours for, for the MEO uh, and 24 hours for the GEO satellites. Uh, uh, and as you can see uh, on the, pic the right picture, uh, I listed the applications for these three types of uh, satellites. For the LEO satellites, they are the cheapest or they are the cheapest orbit. They are great for communication and ideal for getting images. And for the MEO satellites, they are good for navigation and communication. Uh, for the geo satellites, they point at um, precisely the same location on Earth at all times. Uh, so uh, I here I want to pay uh, attention, uh, attract your attention to the the application for the communications. Um, so there is a conclusion thing. Leo satellites are better than geo satellites for communications for the the following reasons. Because firstly, Leo satellites are more time fish efficient, and secondly, Leo satellites um, can cause smaller signal noise due to shorter propagation distance. And certainly, um, it is very connectable. Even if an obstacle is in the line of sight from the terminal to to the satellite, so uh, most uh, it's like mo most of the uh, companies they are applying the Leo satellite for the communications now. Uh, and then I'll talk about the inter satellite link. Uh, so the satellites in the space, they will not only have consistent contact with the ground system, but many of them will be communicating with one and another directly. Uh, so to enable the inter-satellite communications, including data transmissions or relays, the inter-satellite links emerges. Uh, the inter-satellite links can be classified into two types, which we have talked about uh, previously. They are the intraplane, intra, intra, inter-satellite, oh, inter-satellite links, and the interplane inter-satellite links. Um, so as you can see, the red lines are the uh, intraplane links, and the blue lines, uh, which means the satellites on the different orbits, they communicate with each other on the interplane links. And to better uh, understand and calculate, do some, doing some calculations, um, people have proposed another co coordinate, uh, which is a geo geodetic coordinate. Uh, it is no noted by two elements, phi and lambda. Uh, so this coordinate uh, is aimed to calculate the sub-satellite point of a satellite on the ground on time t. Um, so uh, the latitude is determined by the, um, uh, it, it is represented by the letter phi, uh, and this is a calculation. So this calculation, as you can see, is is related to the inclination i uh, and the phase factor u. So with these two elements, we can get the latitude. Uh, and lambda is the longitude, uh, and it's related to two elements, the phasing factor u uh, and the right ascension of the ascending load, omega. Uh, so phi and lambda uh, is the latitude and negatitude which we use every day in our navigation system. Uh, and as you can see, the at the center of the uh, this um, 
green circle, uh, it is the uh, sub-satellite point of a satellite on the Earth. Uh, and this uh, lambda and phi denotes its, its uh, location. Uh, and here is an equation to calculate um, zeta u. Uh, so based on the proposed latitude and longitude, uh, we can calculate the distance between uh, to access interplane satellite of phi one lambda one and phi two lambda two. Uh, and this is uh, so to to calculate the hop count, we 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 just divide it into two steps. Um, so for the uh range difference, uh, it can be denoted as the um like I mean you can see here is satellite one and here is satellite two. Uh, so the uh hop count. Uh, horizontally is the difference of the um, two ascending nodes, uh, which is denoted here as delta L0 equals uh, big omega 2 minus big omega 1, uh, which is here, the, the difference of this one. Uh, and the longitude, uh, because uh, with given uh, e uh, equation of the uh, long longitude, we can also have this equation. So to calculate the uh, interplane hop count, uh, which is the result of delta L omega divided by here, del delta big omega. So uh, here, the big, the delta big omega is what we have calculated uh, in the previous in the previous slides, which equals like two pi divided by by p, uh, we can get the answer here to calculate the hop count uh, horizon horizontally. Uh, and for the intraplane satellite distance, the phasing, uh, so firstly, we have the phasing angle difference, the delta u, um, it is here, u2 uh, and u1. So, um, so just as we mentioned previously, U is the uh, angle between the ascending node and the location of the satellite. So delta U uh, equals like the uh, delta F times the number of horizontal hop count uh, plus HV, which is the number of the hop count, the vertical hop count, uh, Delta and and times delta phi. So with this equation, we can calculate the vertical hop count here and the total hop count from satellite one to satellite two is the number of horizontal is the number of horizontal hop count plus the number of the vertical hop count. Uh, so here comes the most important one: how to calculate the, uh, how to, how to calculate them, and how to formulate the equations to, to set up the, the model. Uh, so this section is basically divided into two parts. The first one I'll introduce the Leo constellation without the intersatellite links, and the second one I'll talk about the. Leo constellation with the link. So for for the first one, I'll firstly talk about the orbit period and then talk about the coverage area of a satellite. Uh, and for the second one, I will um talk about the communication model, both for the inter-satellite links and the satellite terrestrial channel. Uh, so for the orbital period, uh, I think this one may be the very, um, I would say, familiar with you because we might learn it in our high school. Uh, so the radius of the circular orbit is the attitude plus the 
radius of the Earth and the, the satellite's velocity in the circular orbit uh, is uh, is here. Uh, I think it's the like the grand the law of the grand grand gravitation. Uh, and we can also get the orbital period, uh, which comes from the Kepler third law to calculate the period T, uh, and this uh, ratio to calculate the number of the daily passes, uh, it equals the uh, ratio of the sidereal day divided by the orbital period. And then is the coverage of a satellite. Uh, the coverage area served by a satellite is dependent on the light of flight propagation and the minimum elevation angle theta mean here at the user terminal. Uh, so the angular radius of the, uh, I mean, the this, this angle phi here, uh, we can use this equation to uh, calculate the angle phi. Uh, and with the angle phi, we can get the coverage area with this equation to calculate S. Uh, so combining these two equations, we can have a conclusion that a higher attitude H or a lower um, angle theta mean can lead to a larger coverage. Uh, and secondly, it, I will talk about the Leo consternation with the inter-satellite links. As we know, the delay equals um, the combination, the, the sum of four uh, delays, processing delay, queuing delay, transmission delay, and propagation delay. So in most of our uh, systems, we only uh, we consider mostly the transmission delay. But for the satellites, the propagation propagation delay also plays a very important role because the distance between the satellite to the um, user or the distance between two satellites, they are very uh, long. So this one is also taken into account. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for the transmission, for the inter, uh, satellite links transmission channel models, uh, we can have this signal to noise ratio uh, in a free space. Uh, P, G, P, T, G, T, G, R, L, F divided by K, T, E, M. And P, T is the transmission power. G, T and G, R are the transmitting and receiving antenna gain. And LF is the free space loss uh, defined here. Uh, and the KTEM, they are like some, mm, some constant or definitions listed here. So uh, I think this one is very important. This free space loss uh, is defined as uh, the uh, C, how does it say? Uh, it's divided as this, where C is the light speed. Uh, F is the communication frequency, uh, and D is the distance between two satellites. So besides the uh, transmission delay, here comes the propagation delay. So the propagation delay is determined by the distance between two satellites uh, here at DAS. Uh, so to calculate it, uh, firstly, we'll, we will calculate the angle um, AOS here. Uh, so the angle, so the, how to calculate the angle is uh, based on the uh, geometric um, coordinates, lambda phi, to, we can get, we can use this equation to calculate them. Uh, and with that angle, we can calculate the distance at here and the propagation latency is the is the distance divided by the light of uh, the speed of light. Uh, besides the uh, inter satellite links, the satellite terrestrial uh, models are very important uh, because the satellites can communicate directly to the users on the ground. Uh, so for this model, we we can calculate the uh 
the signal noise ratio of the uplink at time t as, as this one. Uh, and this equation is very similar to the one uh, for these inter satellite links. Uh, but one, one more different thing is the AOPT here. Uh, AOPT is the propagation loss, mostly uh, due to the ring attenuation. Uh, and this loss can be defined as mm, this one, uh, where LS is a, a constant uh, and rho is the attenuation per kilometer. Uh, so with this SNR, we can calculate the data rate based on channel theory, uh, like this. Uh, so besides the equations, uh, we, there are also mainly uh, system toolkit for us to do the simulations, and I have listed uh, one here. Uh, so satellites. Uh, constellations are very important, but they also face some challenges. Uh, firstly, there is no network infrastructure. Uh, like in the ground, on the ground, we have the, the many network infrastructure on the ground, uh, which is very convenient. Uh, a second, a second challenge is, uh, satellite has constrained on on board resources, and third challenge is satellite uh, keeps moving and it can cause some switches uh, and switches the user satellite connection. So it's like a very dynamic and complex network. Um, there are some directions to, uh, to solve these problems. So the first one is to do the routine design. Uh, and second one is to um, employ the distributed computation methods to share resources. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, satellite model is composed with six uh, capillary elements, uh, i.e. alpha, omega, v, and little omega. And the satellite constellation can be described as I, P, Q, P, F. Uh, and inter-satellite links, links can be classified into the intraplane uh, links and the interplane links. Uh, and we can use the formulated equations provided in the slides to set up our model. Uh, and here are some reference. Uh, I think that's all of my presentation.